I want to welcome each one of you, my brothers and sisters, for our weekly Bible study. This is on the 10th Sabbath school lesson on uh, Daniel chapter 9. So, God has been gracious to us and our families. We are here in the month of March. We praise God for His uh, blessing and His protection during the month of uh, February. And God will uh, continue to bless us and take care of us even during this month. Let's pray before we begin our study on uh, Daniel chapter 9. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your abundant love and goodness. Lord, we want to also thank you for keeping us alive to see another month. Lord, take care of us and guide us throughout this month. Lord, at this time, as we are going to study book of Daniel chapter 9, we want you to teach each one of us these deeper truths which you want us to learn. Bless each person who is watching and also sharing these wonderful things from Book of Daniel uh, with their friends and neighbors and colleagues and also many of them are sharing online. Lord, bless them also so that your word will reach people who are waiting for your truth. And bless us as we study your word because I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are in the chapter 9. Now, I know the title is uh, Confession and Consolation. Surely, uh, when we confess, then surely God will console us and God will encourage us and uh, God will answer us. Now, few historical details about this chapter, chapter 9. Chapter 9, Daniel was the Prime Minister. And this was the first year of Darius the Mede as the king over Babylon. The first year of Darius the Mede was 539 BC. So 539 BC, now the events in this chapter took place. It is, uh, now you can divide this uh, whole chapter into two parts. One, the fasting prayer of Daniel. Uh, 1 to 23. Then verses 24 till the end of the chapter, this was the vision which uh, Angel Gabriel came to tell Daniel. Now, in this chapter, Daniel must be in his early 90s. King also was 62 years old. But amazing thing was, Daniel was brought to Babylon as a slave with others in 605 BC. But Daniel was promoted as the prime minister. How can that happen in a foreign country? A slave, a bonded laborer, so to speak, became the prime minister. We remember, nothing is impossible to God. Why Daniel was promoted to the highest position in the whole world, only next to the king? Because Daniel was a very honest man. A faithful person and no, there was no fault in him. A praying man, a praying person. And also Daniel fasted and prayed in this chapter. Now I want to tell you my brothers and sisters, many of us uh, are not realizing the power of fasting prayer. Many of us are not realizing the greatest blessing in fasting prayer. Sometimes we are thinking, fasting prayer is not for us. Oh, that is for some Pentecostals. <laughs> but I want to tell you, fasting prayer is for every faithful follower of Jesus. Because we remember, when Moses was there waiting for God to uh, write the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, and Moses did not eat anything or drink anything for 40 days. 40 days. Then in the New Testament, our Lord Jesus also, before he started his public ministry, he also went into the wilderness and fasted for 40 days. He did not eat anything or drink anything. But of course, God is not requiring each one of us to fast 40 days. I know there are uh, uh, some people whom I know they fasted 40 days and 40 nights. I know it's amazing. Sometimes we may say, how can they do that that many days without eating and drinking? But there were people 
And there are still people, many of them do that one. I know many Christians want to do during this, uh, what they call Lent season. They fast during the daytime and eat during the night time, some of them. But there are people who did not eat anything day or night. 40 days they fasted. I know whenever there is a, a need, a crisis in our life, surely fasting prayer is the most powerful prayer by which we can receive answer from God immediately. And uh, in the time of Queen Esther, all the Jewish people prayed, fasted and prayed for three days. That is uh, Esther chapter 4. And uh, Jesus fasting is, was... Uh, uh, for 40 days, Jesus fasted. That was in Matthew chapter 4. And also, uh, in the next chapter, Daniel fasted again 21 days. I know uh, there is a, a, a big list of people like Nehemiah fasted and prayed. Even the church at Antioch, they fasted and prayed and sent Paul and Silas for the ministry. It was tremendous. That's why, yes, fasting is very essential. Especially as we are coming to the end of this world, as we are living in the last days, I know a number of challenges are surrounding us, spiritual challenges, then physical challenges, financial challenges, health challenges, family challenges, and uh, challenges at our work. So many challenges for every problem. Fasting prayer is the solution, is the remedy for us. That's why... If you have not tried it, try it. I know we face a number of uh, challenges in our families, in our lives, in our work and with our children. Surely fasting prayer is the most essential and the powerful one. Try it. Why did Daniel fast at this time? Daniel was prime minister. He had everything. But then why did he fast? Daniel did not fast anything for himself, but he fasted for his people, the Jewish people. Then, uh, what was the problem which the Jewish people faced at this time? Now, it was prophet Jeremiah who told, Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 1 to 11, that Jewish people should be in Babylon as slaves, as a part of their punishment, for 70 long years in Babylon they have to be there as slaves. Why did uh, God send them as a punishment to Babylon? Because two major sins. One, worshipping the idols. Second one, breaking the Sabbath. And also, of course, they also did other sins like uh, stealing, adultery, murdering. So, God sent repeatedly prophet after prophet. Like Jeremiah, God sent as a prophet. They did not listen to him. And he said, Jerusalem would be uh, burnt to uh, now, ashes, all the uh, buildings and every home will be burned down, including God's house. They said, how can that happen? God's temple is here. And as long as God's temple is here in Jerusalem, nothing would happen to Jerusalem. It would be saved. God will not uh, destroy his own house, they told. So, in fact... They branded Jeremiah as a false prophet, as their enemy. Then God sent Habakkuk. Then God sent Zephaniah. God sent that woman uh, Halda. God sent another uh, prophet called Urijah. You can read about him in uh, Jeremiah 28. Then at that time, Ezekiel was a prophet in uh, Babylon among the Jewish people. Daniel was a prophet in, uh, in the capital city, Babylon. So God sent repeatedly several prophets, but they did not listen. They did not obey. So now they are there in Babylon as a punishment, part of their punishment. But last uh, uh, lesson, Daniel chapter 8 verse 10, is 14. Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, which uh, we read, we studied also, unto 2,300 days then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. That Daniel did not understand. In fact, Daniel now was under the impression that maybe my Jewish people continued in great sin. 
they continued to sin more and more. That's why God must have increased our punishment for our people, Jewish people, from 70 long years up to 2300 years. He felt that way. That was his suspicion. That was his uh, understanding. That's why he felt so bad and he even got sick. He worried. He was so much worried for his people. For himself, then he was the prime minister. Nothing to worry. But Daniel had so much concern for his people. Maybe we have to learn that spiritual lesson. Do we have concern for your people? People who are in a, a not good relationship with God. Do you have a burden for, your, for the salvation of your relatives and your friends, your neighbors? And Daniel fasted and prayed for others, not for himself. So praying for others, a technical word we call it intercessory prayer. Praying for others, their salvation. Praying for the uh, uh, healing of others. Praying for uh, God's blessing on others in their problems. Maybe we have to learn that important Current spiritual time lesson. Is PM. That uh, spiritual important, time is PM. important spiritual lesson is definitely that uh, now, do we have the burden to pray for others? Do we have the burden for their salvation? We need to have that one. Because Jesus is coming. Sure, we are praying for ourselves and our families. If we don't do that one, who will do it? But we also should have that burden to pray for others, which is called intercessory prayer. Daniel was doing that one. He was a prime minister. He was in his 90s. In spite of that, he had the burden. And in the olden days, when they fasted uh, to show their uh, now sadness, to show their sorrow, then people wore sackcloth and they put ashes on them or dust on them. Daniel did that, though he was prime minister. How much he humbled himself, wearing a sackcloth and putting dust on himself, ashes on himself. Daniel was a so much humble person. For his people, he would do anything. Then he fasted. And also at that time, Daniel read the book of Jeremiah. Again, we have to learn a lesson. Though he was prime minister, so busy, he took time to read God's word, what was available to him. He was reading the book of uh, Jeremiah to find out if there is anything that the people uh, of God should be there little longer. Or are they going to go back at the end of 70 years? Because Daniel was in his mind, must be calculating. Daniel and others, the first batch came or brought to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar in 605 BC. Now, now this is 539, which means almost 70 years are almost finishing now. Daniel was expecting now, as soon as 70 years are over, then my people will be now given permission to go back to Jerusalem and Judah. That's what he was expecting. But nothing of that talk, nothing of that proposal, no proposal was there to send back the Jewish people to their land. Because he was the prime minister. If there is anything, uh, uh, that kind of a discussion among the government, then he would know it. That's why Daniel began to fast and pray for his people, for their deliverance. Then we have to learn another lesson. Daniel learned in his life, any crisis in his life, he would go to God first. Instead of going to the king, who was a close friend, like, and uh, king had so much of uh, trust on Daniel. King had so much of, uh, uh, let us say, goodwill towards Daniel. But still, Daniel did not go to the king to tell and say, uh, O oh king, uh, my people are suffering here for the last 70 years. Can you show some uh, mercy and send them back? Can you show some favor and send them back? He could have asked. And surely king could have uh, done something because he liked Daniel more. But instead of going to the human being, Daniel learned to go to king of kings and lord of lords first. We need to learn that one also in our lives. Any problem, whether it is health problem, financial problem, spiritual problem, go to God first. 
I know if we have some health problem, immediately we are looking for around who is the best physician, who is the best medical doctor. And if there is a financial crisis, then immediately we look for somebody and say, uh, is there any one of our uh, close family members living abroad or doing a, a good business or having a big job, good job with a more salary so that that person can help me. We try to look for people and depend on them to come out of that problem. But Daniel learned to depend on God. That's what we have to do in these last days. Depend on God. Depend on God. Go to God first for any problem, any help, spiritual as well as physical, health or financial, anything. Let's go to God. So Daniel did that. So he fasted and prayed and he took his problem or uh, he placed the problem of his people, not his personal problem, uh, before God, before the throne of God. Then how did Daniel pray? Daniel chapter 9 verses 4 to 18. Read that one. Then you can uh, now immediately catch uh, an important element in this uh, chapter 9 verses 4 to 18. How did Daniel pray? Daniel did two things. He confessed his sins and the sins of his people. Then he praised God. He praised God. God, we thank you. Because of his grace, your grace, because of your uh, mercy, because of you, your God, you are a, a God who keep the covenant. He was uh, praising God, remembering the greatness of God. And also now throughout the prayer, he did not ask anything from verses 4 to 18, only praising God and confessing sin, praising God and confessing sin. What about our prayer? How much uh, of our prayer is thanksgiving? How much of our prayer is praising God for what He is? He's the creator. He's the king of the universe. He's our redeemer. He's our loving father who gave His life. But many times we don't say anything like that. Only straight away we have a big shopping list like. Then once we start the prayer, then we say, Lord, bless me. I want this one. I want this one. I want that one. Bless my family. Bless my wife. Bless my uh, husband. Bless my children. Bless my parents. All blessing, blessing, blessing. Surely, many times, 99% of our prayer is only asking for some blessing. I want you to see Daniel's prayer. Till verse 19, chapter 9, verse 19. He did not ask anything. Only confessing sin and praising God. I know if you want an answer for our prayer, any one of us, if, you, if, we, if we are expecting an answer from God for our prayer, then the first requirement is we must confess our sin first. Because we are told Psalm 66 verse 18. Psalm 66 verse 18. And if I cherish sin in my heart, God will not listen to my prayer. Surely, if you keep some sin without confessing and still you are praying, how long you pray, how many times you may pray, God will not listen to that. That's why first requirement is, if you want God to answer your prayer, we must confess that sin. Then put your petition before the throne of God. I know there are some prayers, we don't expect an answer, we don't... Uh, uh, look for an answer. Like uh, when we eat food, before e we eat food, we thank God for that food. Uh, we are not uh, expecting any answer. Or when you are in a, some, uh, uh, let us say, worship service or when some thanksgiving meeting, we have opening prayer, closing prayer, you don't expect any answer from God. Just only thanking God. But there are prayers when we are sick, when we are in trouble, when there is an accident or when there is a crisis in the family. Sure, we want an answer. And if somebody is in a, a desperate uh, now life and death situation, then we want immediate answer. So any prayer which you want answer, we must confess our sin like Daniel and pray. And Daniel was saying, Oh God, we did not listen to your servants. Daniel chapter 9 verse 5 and 6. 
Oh God, we did not listen to your servants, the prophets. Sure, so many prophets, prophet after prophet, God sent. But they did not listen. That's why Daniel says, because of that, we did not listen to your servants, your, the prophets. Now uh, we got into this mess. We came here as uh, slaves into Babylon. And also Daniel chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. Daniel says, Oh God, we did not keep your precepts, your commandments. We did not keep your commandments. Because of that, we are here. Sure, they broke the Sabbath. And they uh, uh, did uh, uh, breaking or uh, like uh, stealing, adultery, some of them murdering. They did all of that. That's why he was telling, Lord, he did not do personally, but he's confessing for the, uh, his people because he was an intercessor. He was praying for them. That's why he was confessing their sin also. Then, keeping the commandments is very, very essential. That's why my brothers and sisters, as we live in the last days, surely we need to definitely confess our sins. Then God will answer our prayers. Then, when you come to chapter 9, verse 19, Daniel says, O oh Lord, remember your city, Jerusalem. Remember your people who are called by your name. Remember that city which is called by your name. That is Jerusalem, the city in which Je Jehovah dwells. The city of peace in which Jehovah dwells. That is the now, meaning of uh, name Jerusalem. So that's why, God, please remember your city and your people. So he prayed. He did not ask anything in between the whole prayer. Only just, Lord, remember your people. Remember Jerusalem. Then, while he was still praying, chapter 9, verse 20 and 21, he says, while I was still talking to God, now, prayer is talking to God. But many times, in the prayer time, even in the worship, in the church, and even the prayer, Satan is diverting our mind away from God. Many times what happens, Satan brings to our uh, mind, while you are talking to God, while you are praying, Satan brings to you uh, something, and you, you, in your mind you are wandering in different places. But you are on your knees, you are praying. But your mind is going somewhere. Sometimes Saturn brings to you your mind and say, Now, uh, you have a problem. And now, uh, Saturn tells this one. And uh, you have a, a problem. The problem is, let us say, Did you uh, lock your uh, locker? You have some money or some gold in it. Did you lock it? Now, in the prayer time, only Satan is bringing that thought. Sometimes, what happens as a human being? Now, the hand goes to search for the key in your pocket or in your purse. But still, you're in prayer. I know, many times Satan is diverting. Though, this is the time prayer is talking to God. So, Daniel says, while I was still talking, Angel Gabriel came to answer my prayer. Angel Gabriel came with an answer. So morning he started fasting and praying. By, this, by that afternoon, already God sent an answer through Angel Gabriel. Can you imagine how much power is there in the fasting prayer? Then why are we not practicing it? Why are we not trying it? Then Angel Gabriel said, Daniel, I was sent. The moment you began to pray today, your prayer is heard in heaven. God sent me to give an answer to you. So, when we pray, God sends the answer sincerely when we pray. Then, Angel Gabriel said, Daniel, I came to give you understanding. What understanding? Which one he did not understand? Which one he troubled, for uh, uh, which matter, or uh, which vision troubled Daniel? He was sick also. Daniel chapter 8 was 14. 2300 he did not understand. Angel Gabriel was sent by God to give an explanation, interpretation. 
when angel came close to Daniel and standing there in Daniel chapter 8 verse 15 and 16, Daniel could not see the glory and he fainted. Could not see the glory of angel Gabriel. He fainted. That's why he could not hear that interpretation. Angel went away. And Daniel says in Daniel chapter 8 verse 27, and he, was, he became sick for several days. He was sick. I know when there is a worry, that worry brings so much sickness and weakness in our body. Daniel was worried. For what? He was thinking the punishment for our people, Jewish people now was 70 long years to be in Babylon. Maybe they are sinning more and more. That's why God must have increased our punishment from 70 years to 2300 days. That number which he heard in Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. Maybe God increased the punishment for 2300 days for my people. That's what his worry. That's what his suspicion. That's why he worried so much. But at the point, Daniel chapter 8 verse uh, 16 and 17, uh, Angel Gabriel said, Daniel, I came to give you Mare. The Hebrew word is Mare. Mare means that vision which is shown to you, which you did not understand. I came to explain it. I came to give you understanding of that which you could not understand. That is the Hebrew word Mare means. Again in chapter Daniel chapter 9, now, Angel Gabriel says, this is in verse 22 and 23, Daniel, I came to give you Mare. Same word again he is using. Now what is the gap between 10, 8 and uh, uh, nine, eight and 9 chapters? Between 8 and 9 chapters, 10 years gap. There was 10 years gap. During this 10 years he did not get any vision. So Daniel must be praying all of this 10 years. But now God sent an answer when he fasted and prayed. And Angel Gabriel says, I came to give you that Mare. I showed you that vision. You could not understand something in that. I came to explain that now. That's why in English it is translated as, I came to give you understanding of the vision. Then after saying that one, Daniel chapter 9 verse 23, Angel Gabriel was now praising Daniel by saying, Daniel, you are beloved of God. God loves you so much. God loves you so much. Now, no human being was given this kind of, uh, let us say, now, praising. No human being was praised by Angel Gabriel that God loves you so much. No human being was given this kind of a recognition by God. Because Daniel was a faithful person, a prayerful person. That's why God loved him so much. Now, there is only one person that is in the New Testament, that is Jesus. And when Jesus came to take baptism in Jordan River, now the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. Then God the Father spoke to him from the sky saying, This is my beloved son. Daniel is also called as beloved of God. What a great acknowledgement. What a, what a great recognition for Daniel for his faithfulness and prayer life. Each one of us living in these last days, we must live as such people, as beloved of God, loving daughters, loving sons of Jesus in the last days. That can come only by our faithfulness and prayer life. So, Daniel was highly esteemed as beloved of God. No human being was given that recognition. We need to learn that lesson from Daniel's life. Then, Angel Gabriel says, Daniel, 70 weeks are cut off for your people. Or in English translation, English, uh, English translation it says, 70 weeks are determined upon your people. Now, the Hebrew word here which uh, Angel Gabriel used was chatak. Chatak means cutting a small piece out of a big piece. If there is a big piece, out of that big piece, a small piece is cut and given to you. That is the Hebrew word chatak meaning. Daniel, 70 weeks are cut off for your people. Now from where it is cut off, it should be translated as cut off. But it is translated weekly, or, or a weak translation is determined, it says, in many translations in English. But 
from where it is cut off a big piece of time is what 2300 in daniel chapter 8 verse 14 out of that 2300 years this one day is equal to one year out of 2300 years 70 weeks are cut off 70 weeks means 77 it comes to 490 490 but each day is a year human year that is the year day principle 490 days is equal to 490 years this is cut off for your people daniel particularly angel gabriel was emphasizing on that it is for your people it is cut off then what is going to happen that is the starting point angel gabriel said daniel when when you get a decree that means king's permission uh, to rebuild the walls of jerusalem this prophecy would start which means starting point of the prophecy of 70 uh, weeks is when they get the decree to rebuild the walls of jerusalem and we have to notice this one carefully it is not concerning the temple temple was already built permission was given by king cyrus and but it was completed in his, in the time of his uh, now grandson uh, now temple was completed and uh, dedicated uh, by 515 bc 515 bc but now when they get that permission to rebuild the walls of jerusalem then if you look into the history then clearly it is said king artaxerxes king artaxerxes gave this permission in 457 bc 457 bc king artaxerxes gave this permission to rebuild the walls of jerusalem then angel gabriel split that 70 weeks into three parts three components angel gabriel said daniel seven weeks then 62 weeks and the last week in the middle of the last week messiah shall be cut off so which means from the time they got the permission in 457 bc in seven weeks seven seven sir 49 which means 49 days 49 years in 49 years something should happen what happened the walls around jerusalem were completed i know for a long time almost for 40 years they were not complete then god used nehemiah he came in 52 days he completed the walls and for completion of the walls and beautification of jerusalem city took seven seven so which means 49 years which means by 408 bc walls were completed beautification of that city was completed then from that 405 408 408 bc another 62 weeks 62 weeks if you convert into days it will come to 434 days 434 days is equal to 434 years then uh, now if you count from 408 408 bc this 434 years will take us up to 26 ad 26 ad we are crossing from bc to ad but according to the now uh, the uh, uh, set norms when you cross from bc to ad always whatever the number comes you have to add one so 26 ad we have to add one which means it becomes 27 ad then what happened in 27 ad jesus took baptism because jesus was born in 4 bc so by 27 ad jesus was 30 years old he took baptism and up to that uh, time people were thinking oh he's a good young man he's not doing bad things he's very very good young man only they thought he was a good young man human being but after his baptism then he went to wilderness and uh, fasted for 40 days then he began to do the miracles he changed the water into grape juice at the wedding in cana then he healed the blind he healed the leper he healed the sick and he resurrected even the dead then people began to realize he is not ordinary person he is not just that carpenter who we, whom we thought uh, a good uh, young man in uh, uh, this place but uh, definitely 
He is Messiah. He is Messiah. So that's why surely they began to realize and recognize. So by the time Jesus took baptism, 69 weeks finished. 7 weeks, that means 49 years finished for constructing the walls around Jerusalem and the beautification of the Jerusalem temple. From that time in uh, 408 BC up to his baptism, another 434 years, that is 62 weeks. 62 plus 7 weeks, 69 weeks finished. Then the last week, one week means 7 days, in the middle of the week, which means 3 and a half days, one day is equal to one year, 3 and a half years after his baptism, what happened? Jesus was crucified. Jesus was crucified on Passover day, Passover festival. So that was in 31 AD, Jesus died. Then, after, uh, on the third day he resurrected, after 40 days he went back to heaven. Then, how much time was remaining? Only half the week. Only half a week, which was promised to part of Jewish people. This is only for Jewish people, not for Gentiles. Then that uh, remaining three and a half years will uh, would take us up to 34 AD. In 34 AD, what happened? Stephen was stoned to death by the Jewish people. So when Stephen was stoned to death, all of that 490 years prophecy which God gave as a probation for the Jewish people was over. They killed his son, that is Jesus crucified, and they began to kill the followers of Christ like Stephen. Then all of that probationary time given to them to come to God and to anoint the most holy and to... Uh, come closer to him and to do his work, they failed. That's why the privilege of preaching the gospel, the privilege of being the ambassadors of God for the whole world to take the gospel was taken away from them, given to us, the Gentiles. That's why out of 2300, 490 was given only to the Jews. Remaining time is 1810. That will take us up to 1844. So in 1844, October 22, this longest prophecy of 2300 is finished. Then the judgment started in heaven. But one thing we need to uh, learn in conclusion. This prophecy is 70 weeks prophecy. 490 is prophecy is only for the Jewish people, not for Gentiles, not for anyone else. Why? I'm saying this one and emphasizing again and again. Because... Most of the people today, they say, now, before the end of the world, there will be seven years of uh, persecution. Antichrist will come. He will hate Christians. He will persecute Christians. Then, God cannot see his people being persecuted. So, Jesus will take his followers secretly, like a thief, into the mid-sky. Then he will give them seven years of uh, wedding supper of the Lamb. And there will be seven years of a great tribulation, great persecution on this earth. They say it is not biblically supported. It is not there in the Bible anywhere. This is only imagination of some people. And it is only fabricated doctrine. It is not supported by Bible. We are not told anywhere that the 70 weeks, one week is removed from the 70. And that one week is kept for the end of the world. Nowhere it is said. Angel Gabriel told clearly, Daniel chapter 9 verse 24, Daniel, these 70 weeks are for your people. Who are Daniel's people? Jewish people. That's a 70 weeks. That means 490 years are for Jewish people, not for you and me Gentiles. That's why it is wrong on our part to take one week away from 70 and put it there somewhere at the end of the world. That's wrong. On top of that, Messiah should be cut off in the middle of the year. Messiah shall be cut off. For his people, not for himself. Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. Now, if you remove that last week, then, then where, just say, uh, where the Messiah would be uh, crucified for us, for our sins? Because the last week, in the middle of the last week only, Jesus was crucified. But now, many people, many people, many scholars, many preachers, they say, ah, that last week is for the Antichrist to rule. That's wrong. That is their imagination, which is not supported from the Bible. Show one text from the Bible that out of the 71 week, the last week is taken away 
kept it at the end of the uh, world that is to fulfill uh, during the persecution nothing like that it's only their imagination that's why we need to be careful that's why my brothers and sisters jesus is coming soon till he comes let us continue faithfully like daniel and continue in prayer continue in fasting whenever it is needed continue to observe his commandments so that one day jesus will say well done my son well done my daughter you are my beloved daughter you are my beloved son as god acknowledged recognized daniel's faith god will also tell you and me my loving son my loving daughter he would say that may the lord help us to live faithfully to bring glory and honor to him in these last days if it is your determination if it is your decision join with me i want to pray and i want to thank each one of you for uh, joining us and also watching our program many of you are sharing with the uh, your friends and uh, others uh, online god will bless you abundantly for doing that some of you are sharing with your families and your friends and your colleagues and your uh, church members continue to do that for god's glory because we have wonderful truth uh, from book of daniel next week we will study uh, chapter 10 until that time let god's peace be upon us let's pray loving father we want to thank you for helping us to understand the insights from book of daniel chapter 9 and continue to keep us loyal and faithful to you so that we will live as your loving sons and daughters in these last days bringing glory and honor to you as daniel did in those days and let your peace and blessing be upon us until we meet again next week so that we can study and learn many wonderful truths from book of daniel chapter 10 next week bless all of those who are watching because i pray in jesus precious name amen my brothers and sisters uh, god bless you continue to uphold us uh, and our ministry and my family in your prayers god be with you god bless you